This is called the Pony Bar, Oakland. There are certain perfect particular sounds. A tennis ball, a golf ball hit just right, a fly ball in a leather glove, lingering thud of a knockout. I get dizzy at the sound of a perfect pool break, a crisp bank shot followed by three or four muffled slides and consecutive clicks, the caressing twist-twist of chalk on the cue. Pool is erotic any way you look at it, usually in a dim, pulsating jukebox light. Cricket in Santiago, red parasols, green grass, white undies, red and white striped canvas chairs at the Prince of Wales Country Club. I signed chits for lemonade, tipped the tuxedoed waiters, applauded John Wells. Perfect crack of the cricket bat. I wore white, was careful of grass stains, flirted with boys who wore grain school gray flannels, blue blazers in summertime. Cucumber sandwiches for tea, plans for Sunday at Viña del Mar. At the pony bar, I remembered feeling as alien on the green grass as I did on the bar stool next to the biker. He had hinges tattooed on his wrists, at the bend of his elbow, behind his knees. <laughs> you need a hinge on your neck, I said. You need a screw up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is called My Jockey. It's for Duncan McNaughton. I like working in emergency. You meet men there anyway. Real men, heroes, firemen, and jockeys. They're always coming into emergency rooms. Jockeys have wonderful x-rays. They break bones all the time, but just tape themselves up and ride the next race. Their skeletons look like trees, like reconstructed brontosaurus, St. Sebastian's x-rays. I get the jockeys because I speak Spanish, and most are Mexican. The first jockey I met was Munoz. I undress people all the time, and it's no big deal. It takes a few seconds. Munoz lay there unconscious, a miniature Aztec god. Because his clothes were so complicated, it was as if I were performing an elaborate ritual. Unnerving because it took so long, like in Mishima where it takes three pages to take off the lady's kimono. His magenta satin shirt had many buttons along the shoulder and at each tiny wrist. His pants were fastened with intricate lacings, pre-Columbian knots. His boots smelled of manure and sweat, but were as soft and dainty as Cinderella's. He slept on, an enchanted prince. He began to call for his mother even before he woke. He didn't just hold my hand like some patients do, but clung to my neck, sobbing, Mamacita, Mamacita. The only way he would let Dr. Johnson examine him was if I held him cradled like a baby. He was as tiny as a child, but strong, muscular. A man in my lap, a dream man, a dream baby. Dr. Johnson sponged my forehead while I translated. For sure, he had a broken collarbone, at least three broken ribs, probably a concussion. No, Munoz said, he had to ride in tomorrow's races. Get him to x-ray, Dr. Johnson said. Since Munoz wouldn't lie down on the gurney, I carried him down the corridor like King Kong. He was weeping. <laughs> he was weeping, terrified. His tears soaked my breast. We waited in the dark room for the x-ray tech. I soothed him just as I would a horse. Calmate, lindo, calmate, despacito, despacito, slowly, slowly. He quieted in my arms, blew and snorted softly. I stroked his fine back. It shuddered and shimmered like that of a splendid young colt. It was marvelous. Okay, where am I? 